Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make an isometric grid template in Adobe Illustrator. I used an isometric template to create the design you see here on my artboard, and there are so many different possibilities that you can create once you have this template. So let's move on to a blank document and get started. My artboard is 15 by 10 inches. The first thing I'll do is zoom out. I'm not going to change the size of the artboard, just the view. Keyboard shortcut command minus, and I'll press that twice because I want to be able to see around the outside of my artboard. Next, I need the horizontal measurement of the artboard so I know how long my lines need to be. So I'll get the line segment tool, keyboard shortcut backslash, and I'll click right here on the top left corner first and then drag down to the bottom right and the little text box next to my cursor tells me what that measurement is just a little hair over 18 inches I'll release my mouse and delete that line and then with the line segment tool still active I'm going to press down on the artboard to open the line segment tool options dialog box. Well, that same measurement is showing up here in the length, but I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to round up to the nearest inch. So I'm going to type in 19 inches, then come down and change the angle to 90 degrees and say OK. Here I have my first line. I'll come over to the properties panel and I'm going to change this to a black one point stroke and then I'm going to align it to the left side of the artboard. I'll first click on the horizontal align left and then vertical align center. Here I have my first line and we're going to duplicate this so I'll go up to object transform and move. Now when the move dialog box comes up I'm going to type in a half of an inch in the horizontal value and that's going to tell Illustrator to place my new line a half of an inch to the right of the old one. I'm going to change the vertical value to zero and we don't need to even worry about distance or angle and I'm going to press copy. Now that I have my first line copied, I'm going to need to make some more, but how many more do I need to make? Well, to determine that, I look at the value of the length of the line, which is 19, and I'm just going to double that. So I'm going to create 38 lines across my artboard, and it's going to actually spill onto the side, but that's okay. We're going to need those in a few minutes. So I'll use the keyboard shortcut command D, and I'll just keep pressing until I have 38 lines. Now let me just pause here to say that you can use any size artboard you want as long as you follow the directions I just gave you. First, you're going to get the diagonal measurement of your artboard and round that value up to the nearest inch. That's going to be the length of your lines and then the number of lines is going to be the length of your lines times 2. Almost everything going forward is then going to be exactly the same. Now I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and I'll select all of the lines and I'm going to group them, keyboard shortcut command G, and then I'll come over to the properties panel in the align area and I'm going to center this group of vertical lines by pressing on horizontal align center. Now, while my vertical lines are selected, I'm going to copy them and rotate them. I'm going to come up to Object, choose Transform, and then Rotate. Here I'm going to type in 60 degrees, and then I'll press Copy. So this is the second set of lines for our grid, and now we're going to duplicate that again. Keyboard shortcut command D, and we have all of our lines. It doesn't look right yet, though, because I'm going to have to tweak the vertical lines. So I'll select one of these vertical lines in the group that selects the entire group, and I'll come over to the Properties panel, and in the Align area, I'm going to click on Horizontal Align Left. Now everything is lined up perfectly. At this point, I could go ahead and convert this into a template, but the lines around the outside edge really bug me. So I'm going to show you a real easy way to clean those lines up. 
First of all, I'll get the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M, and click on the artboard to open up the rectangle dialog box. And I'm going to create a rectangle that's exactly the size of my artboard, which is 15 inches wide. Let me tab down to the height and type in 10 inches, and then I'm going to press OK. Now I need to give this a color so we can see it. So I'm going to pick something light, and it doesn't really matter what it is because we're going to delete it in a few minutes anyway. Now the rectangle has got to be centered exactly on top of the artboard, so I'll move over to the Properties panel in the Align area and first click on the Horizontal Align Center and then the Vertical Align Center. Now let's move up to the Layers panel, and I'm going to twirl the layer open and we can see we have four subgroups here. Now, if you haven't used the Layers panel before, let me just explain a couple of things. Each one of the sets of lines is on its own sublayer, and I have control over them individually. So if I click on the little eyeball next to this group, I can hide a set of lines. Now, I'm only going to work with one set of lines at a time, so I'm going to come up and even hide this second group. So now I'm able to isolate this subgroup that you see on the artboard and the rectangle and work just with them. I'll get the Selection Tool, Keyboard Shortcut V, and I'll select all of these lines and the rectangle, and then get the Shape Builder Tool, Keyboard Shortcut Shift M, and hold the Option key down and just drag my mouse over all of the lines that are on the outside of the rectangle. Now be sure and don't click on the rectangle or you're going to get rid of some things you don't want to get rid of. Well, those lines are cleaned up now, so I'm going to hide that layer and I'm going to lock it and I'm going to unhide the next group of lines and get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, select all of these lines and the rectangle, get the shape builder tool, keyboard shortcut shift M, hold the option key down and drag again over the outside lines around that rectangle and if you miss some, you just you can just go back and pick them up, but keep the Option key pressed down until everything is cleaned up. Now those lines are cleaned up, so I'll lock that subgroup and hide it, and I'll unhide the last group, get the Selection Tool, Keyboard Shortcut V, select the lines and the rectangle, get the Shape Builder Tool, Keyboard Shortcut Shift M, hold down the Option key and drag across all of the outside lines one last time, and then I'll unlock all of these layers, and I'm going to show all of them, and then let's get the Selection Tool, Keyboard, Shortcut, V, click on the artboard to deselect everything, then I'm going to come back and click on the rectangle and just press the delete key. Now what I'm left with is the three sublayers that make up my grid and the outside of the artboard has now been cleaned up. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you can see just how perfectly everything is lined up. I'll use the keyboard shortcut command zero. And the reason everything lines up so perfectly is because we used this transform tool to both move and rotate the lines. Now we're ready to select all of the lines. I'll use the keyboard shortcut Command A and to convert the lines to a grid template, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Command 5. And when I click off of the artboard, you can now see our template is ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is actually close this layer and lock it because I don't want to risk moving one of these lines as I'm working on my project. But I am going to have to create another layer so that the artwork can go somewhere. So I'll come down and click on the Create New Layer icon and now this is where all of my artwork will go. Then if I want to save it as a template, I'll come up to File, Save As, and when the Save As dialog box opens up, I'm going to give this a name that I'll recognize when I come back to it. So I'm going to type in isometric grid. Then I need to decide where I'm going to put it. If I have a lot of templates, I might go ahead and just create a folder for templates. But wherever you put it, you need to make sure and remember where it is because you're going to have to be able to navigate back to it. Now we don't save the isometric grid as an AI file. That's an Adobe Illustrator file. We come down to Format and change this to an AIT file, which is an Illustrator template. And then 
we'll say save. Then let's go ahead and close this out and we'll see what happens when we want to access it again. I'll come up to File, and instead of choosing New, I'm going to choose New from Template. And by default, Illustrator is going to come to Illustrator's template folders. Now, I don't ever put my templates in Illustrator's folders because I don't want to run the risk of losing my templates if I end up having to reinstall Illustrator at some time. So that's why you have to remember where you put your file. So what I'll do is come over to Documents because I remember that's where they were. Here is my isometric grid AIT file. I'll click on it and choose New. And here we have a brand new document with our grid set in it ready for us to start a project. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and you'll try your hand at making an isometric grid template and then have fun playing with all of the different designs that you can make. I also want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future tutorials. And I'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.